number 30 of our lesson from the Bible. And today we're going to pick up an inerrancy. Many seminaries where they train men into the ministry now or no longer have a declaration of inerrancy of the Bible. It's thrown out. It's not believed. Biblical inerrancy is the belief that the Bible is without error or fault in all its teachings. That's not in the seminaries, many of them. It's not believed. And I'm going to tell you right now what I believe. That the King James Bible is without error or fault in all teaching. Now, there's a joke out there, and it's true. There's a Bible out there called the Adulterer's Bible. And accidentally, the printer put, Thou shall commit adultery. That is a human error. Maybe somewhere in your Bible, accidentally a period was put for a comma. Maybe a letter was forgotten. Or a word. But that's not what we're talking about, right or wrong. We're talking about the infallible inerrancy of the Bible. And when we compare the King James to the modern Bibles, modern Bibles remove and add, causing an error and a fault. When you were to take the aspect of the Book of Mormon, a religious book, that it has no record anywhere of the testimony of any biblical writers that whatsoever in the book fits in the Bible. Archaeology can't even find the means and the modes in the, in the people and the places of the Book of Mormon. You can't find Jesus Christ quoting from the Book of Mormon. Paul, Peter, anybody. It's supposed to be a new, new Testament book. After Jesus Christ's resurrection, you figure Paul would have said something, but no. Differing to the widespread belief, We have a lot of comments by the writers of the New Testament and Old Testament regarding the writers, other writers, of the Old and New Testament. You will find Paul, Jesus, and Peter, and James, and John, and Matthew, and Mark, and Luke, quoting Old Testament scripture writer. You will find prophecy and events of the Old Testament in the pages of the New Testament. And the Old Testament writers have long died off. So you understand initial Christians were intelligent on inspiration. Inspiration is, did God say it? Did God give it to us? Again, I proclaim the King James 1611 Bible. 
absolutely without error and fault. And 100% inspired by God through the Holy Spirit. There is no other Bible today that has without the error, without the fault. So how do I distinguish that David actually had, had God speak to him directly, like he said? Taking David as one example of God speaking to David, he say, how do we know? Do you believe Jesus Christ is God? I do. You don't believe Jesus Christ is God? You've got a problem. Jesus Christ himself saying in the gospel, David, by the Spirit, said, Jesus Christ authorized and showed us our approval, show us his approval of the Holy Scriptures. He said, well, how do I know there was a Solomon? Jesus said, greater, greater than Solomon's here. Jesus said that there was a widow woman that Elijah helped. Paul ran back to the old scriptures. Jude speaks about Enoch. Peter speaks about the flood. James speaks about the 12 tribes of Israel. In, book, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1, it is written the second treason, O Theophilus. And when you run over back to the Gospel of Luke, you find the same introduction to the same man by the same writer, Luke. Now we have a here comes here comes a couple of new words for you. Higher criticism. And we have a lower criticism. He said, what is that style? Higher critic and is that where the pastor and, and the elders and the and the deacons speak about the people? <laughs> And the lower criticism, is that the people speaking about the pastor, deacons, and the elders? No. And they don't mention the height level of the critic. You see, higher, criti higher criticism, when dealing with the Bible, deals with the material of authorship. Who wrote in the Bible what you read? Now, the final authority is God, the Holy Spirit, but who wrote the first five books of the Bible? What psalm are prescribed to David and other writers? Who wrote? Higher criticism also goes to the history. There's much history in our Bible. And the events of those histories. Higher criticism takes to the background. Is God dealing with the Jews? Is he dealing with the Gentiles? Is he dealing with the church? Or is he dealing with the world? Daniel, where is Daniel written? And dates of higher criticism. And some Bibles have dates. Some places in the Bible, God gives us the date. And whether the writers quote one or another, they got a value date each other. 
You can't say that Noah built an ark for a worldwide flood and had Peter say that Noah built a barge. He built a houseboat. You can't have conflicting between any of the writers of the Bible. You can't say that Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. And they have another writer say, well, you know, and then there was George and Fred and now is you that's not in the scriptures. You see, there's a lot of outside sources. They say, thus saith the Bible, and the Bible don't say it. There's a church that says Mary is the mediator between God and man. The Bible says there's there is there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Conflict. Not the Bible with the church. The Book of Mormons we mentioned before, when they mentioned the, these people and places that no one knows. There's a conflict. Not with the Bible, the Book of Mormon. If the Dead Sea Scrolls say this, and the King James Bible says that, there's a conflict with the De Dead Sea Scrolls not with the King James Bible. And that goes with the modern Bibles too. If the modern Bible says that God prepared for me a shack, a room, my King James Bible says God's going to prepare a mansion, there's a conflict. And I'll take the King James Bible and I'll take the mansion. You can take the shack. Lower criticism refers to the actual text, manuscript evidence, and I said that too with the modern Bible. Where they say in one place, in the book of Acts, Stephen's message to the, to the Sanhedrin, one says Jesus, the other Bible say Joshua, there's a conflict. And the conflict's not with the King James Bible. And if the Holy Spirit is really in you, then you, one of the things that occur in you is he bears witness with your spirit as to the spirit as to the strength of what you read in your Bible. I don't have to open up a Bible and I can hear if a Bible being quoted to me is not correct. That's the Holy Spirit. 